Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, may you have all the glory for this video. May your words be spoken, not mine. And may everyone who comes here be blessed. I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I did want to say about my opening prayer that it's based on Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And there's another one like it. There are many verses about how we speak and what comes out of our mouth. But this one is Psalm 141, verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. And so I'm just, I'm not asking the Lord for a prophetic utterance when I pray. I'm just submitting my mouth to his will. And uh, that that's really all there is to it. Um, I do want to say that um, one more thing about prophecy. I did have to do a prophetic um, video last time. And prophecy can be either um, speaking forth God's word or speaking something that is going to happen in the future, that God has given you some sort of revelation. And um, I want to say that I received one more confirmation of the messages that I got in my for my last video, which is the time is at hand. And it's Revelation 22.10. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And so we are not to despise prophesying, and we're also to earnestly desire to prophesy, because it edifies the church. And so I just wanted to add that into uh, the conversation from my last video. Well, let me present the gospel. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to spend eternity with him. But that can't happen unless you are born again. So first admit that you are a sinful creature. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. In order to be born again, all you have to do is just believe that without adding in any of your own good works or any um, trying to be good, nothing like that. It doesn't have anything to do with belonging to a particular church or practicing any religion. The moment you believe is like a personal encounter in your heart with God himself, where you call on his name because the scripture says all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so I hope that you have believed because uh, it means the difference between eternal life or eternity in hell. And the moment you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit. He indwells you forever. He will never leave you because salvation is eternal. You can never lose it. So please feel free to send me an email. My email address is in the description box, or you can leave a comment below. Well, I wanted to talk to you today about Jesus being the Good Shepherd. I know I've touched on this topic before, but it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I really am one of Jesus' little sheep, a sheep in his little flock. And here is the verse that kind of spurred me on to do this. It's from Deuteronomy 33, 12. It's when Moses is giving blessings to all of the 12 tribes of, tribes of Israel. And here's what he says. Verse 12, And of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And it just reminded me of Jesus carrying a lamb on his shoulders. And so listen to Luke 15, 4. 
What man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in a wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And then he cometh home. He calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And then in John 10, verse 14, just a second, I'm trying to work this. Here we go. In, in John 10, verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have no, am known of mine. So we know him. We know him and he knows us. And then, uh, skipping back to John 10, verse 2. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. My sheep, this is uh, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So this verse, it makes it very clear that salvation is eternal. Once you are born again, you can never lose that salvation. And then I just have to draw a, a underscore here, underline, my sheep hear my voice. I am, I don't know why I'm so fascinated by voices, beautiful voices, and what the scripture says about voices, even in uh, Revelation, I think when the seventh angel was about to sound, it's called the voice of the angel was about to sound, but it's really referring to a trumpet. Sometimes Jesus' voice sounds like a trumpet. Sometimes God's voice sounds like the roaring of the sea, like thunder. It's just, it's marvelous. I just should really do a study on the voices, the representations of the voice in in the scripture but anyway Jesus is our shepherd and knowing that and remembering that he is not going to leave us stranded in the wilderness he is coming soon he's going to get everyone that's born again that's in his flock and we're going to be carried between his shoulders as it says in Deuteronomy Listen to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. This should be great encouragement, great comfort for all of us. And of course, I want to close with the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so that's what we have to look forward to. That foreverness is a huge promise. 
and I don't believe my feelings. I don't believe it when I feel bad. Although sometimes I feel really bad, and I know you do too. We all do. But in the end, I believe God's promises. And he promises to come and get us. And he promises that we will dwell in his house forever. So thank you for coming. God bless you. I love you all. I will see you all very soon. If there's another video to post, God will show me and I will upload it. Until then, bye for now.